Like any good finance story, this one begins with fraud. But not just any fraud. Because this fraud helps shed light on a huge conflict that could change the crypto world forever. So to begin, you need to know who Coinbase is. They're America's largest crypto exchange. And naturally, when a new coin gets added to their platform, it's a big deal. The coins are now tradable by millions of new investors. Interest surges, and so does the price. So with influence like this, it's only natural that someone tries to profit off of it. And yes, this is where things get fraudy. Imagine you're working at Coinbase. You're part of their private chats, giving you the inside scoop into which coins are going to be listed way before anyone else. That'd be pretty useful information, right? Information that could make you millions? Because theoretically, you'd be able to invest heavily into these coins before their listing, before the new wave of investors pump the price up, and you'd be guaranteed to make a boatload of cash. It's a bulletproof plan. Except you can't do it yourself. That'd be too obvious. I mean, you work for the company, you'd get caught. So what can you do? Let's think about this. How can you outsmart the company, remain anonymous, and still make fat stacks? You got it. Instead of you investing, just tip off your brother and your friend. Genius, no one will ever catch you and you're gonna make a killing. This is exactly what authorities think happened at Coinbase. Charges filed state that an ex-Coinbase employee, Ishan Wahi, was tipping off his brother and his friend and then used that information to trade tokens for almost a year. According to a Justice Department press release, the Coinbase employee on at least 14 occasions passed off these tips. And the way he did it was too simple. Ishan had access to private Coinbase message channels detailing the token releases. This was incredibly rare and valuable information. Using this information, the three men used anonymous blockchain wallets to acquire the coins before Coinbase listed them. Once the price had pumped, they then sold them for a profit. The result, around $1.5 million in gains. This was a big deal and they covered their tracks well, but of course not perfectly. Purchases were done through accounts held in other people's names, and funds were transferred through multiple anonymous blockchain wallets. And to top this off, the three of them kept on creating new wallets with zero transaction history to keep their scheme concealed. And they would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those meddling blockchain snoops. One of their large trades got spotted by Twitter. They were getting attention and Coinbase took notice. Coinbase needed to find the pest among them. And it didn't take long. Ishan was requested to have a little sit down with Coinbase's director of security operations. And the gig was up. So what does Ishan do in the situation? Face the music, risk getting caught, run? Yeah, that. He attempts to board a plane to India only to be caught by authorities and forced to face justice. <laughs> This was the first time anyone had ever been charged with cryptocurrency insider trading, and the message from authorities was pretty clear. Web3 was no longer lawless. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said fraud is fraud, whether it occurs on the blockchain or on Wall Street. And the Southern District of New York will continue to be relentless in bringing fraudsters to justice, wherever we may find them. But while wire fraud and around $1.5 million in questionable profits sounds exciting, there's a little detail to this story that, as I said in the start of this video, could potentially change everything for Coinbase and maybe crypto itself because the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. And while they didn't accuse Coinbase themselves of any wrongdoing in this wire fraud, they did say something that Coinbase was not okay with. And what was this terrible statement? The SEC said when it looked at the fraudulent trades, it had figured out that seven of the tokens listed on Coinbase were actually securities. Seemingly harmless statement, right? Wrong. To Coinbase, this was about as bad as it gets. What does this mean if Coinbase's tokens were securities? Regulation. And regulation is bad for the crypto business. I don't know if you've noticed this, but the crypto community in general really doesn't like rules or authority of any conceivable kind. So Coinbase responded to the SEC's pushing and shoving with some fighting of their own. And how do you respond if you're a successful, publicly traded platform looking to battle with the US government? You write a strongly worded blog post. I'm serious, that's what they did. The blog post was titled, Coinbase does not list securities. End of story. As the post pointed out that the Department of Justice, which received the same facts, didn't file any security fraud charges against Coinbase. And they also referenced a statement describing the SEC's actions as a striking example of regulation by enforcement. A bit of a no-no. They went on to state that before they list any tokens on their platform, they analyzed whether each digital asset could potentially be considered a security, a process the SEC itself has looked over before. They say that 
most of the tokens they review don't get listed on their platform, and they didn't stop there. Coinbase stated that the SEC was essentially doing this on purpose. They're purposely creating hard to follow rules for a particular reason, power. The SEC wants to bring all digital assets under its jurisdiction. Even the assets that aren't actually securities, which is their jurisdiction. But why? Because it means their departments get more funding and more power. So yeah, Coinbase gave the SEC the good old middle finger in a blog post from the safety of their corporate offices, but a finger nonetheless. And then they followed up that finger with another identical twin when they filed a petition for rulemaking, essentially arguing that modern securities law, which was largely written in the 1930s, wasn't made with digital assets in mind, given that you know digital assets weren't even a thing back then. And on top of this, crypto markets don't even behave like regular markets. Places like the New York Stock Exchange have set hours where trading can take place, but crypto is no rules, balls to the walls, 24 hours a day, seven days per week, and trades happen instantly. And there's an even bigger reason at the heart of this. Crypto doesn't require intermediaries. Users can take tokens like stable coins and use them to buy other cryptos. There aren't any rules that currently exist for this kind of trading. Nothing exists. So taking the old rules for securities and slapping them on digital assets won't work, at least without causing some kind of other issues. Okay, so a fairly sound argument from Coinbase, but what's the SEC's point of view here? We need to understand both sides of the argument. Well, in Washington, there's been a growing demand for regulators to get involved with crypto. This outcry has only gotten louder since the bear market in all of these crypto platform collapses, for good reason. SEC Chair Gary Gensler has stated that Coinbase and other platforms like it need to take more actions to protect retail investors. Again, another thing that makes sense. He's also argued for a long time that a lot of cryptocurrencies should be registered with the SEC. The SEC basically considers a token a security when it involves investors using their money to fund a company, or in this case a currency, that derives profits for investors from a common management. In business, this is really simple. You invest money in a management team who you think will make you more money and their efforts will make you that money. So. Some cryptocurrencies are definitely securities. The ones that you should worry about are the tokens that somehow pay you profits from a business. This is commonly done through buying back and burning token supply. That's where my radar goes off a little bit. But despite this, the SEC hasn't really stated which coins exactly are securities yet. And the recent tussle between Coinbase and the SEC isn't the first time these two have clashed heads. When Coinbase first went public, its first quarter earnings report included a comment that it had received investigative subpoenas from the SEC for documents and information about certain customer programs, operations, and intended future products, including the company's stablecoin and yield generating products. These investigations came to a head when the SEC actually caused Coinbase to back down with its tail between its legs in 2021. See, Coinbase had plans to release a product that paid customers interest in exchange for lending. But the SEC did not like this at all and threatened to sue them into oblivion. And sure, you know, Coinbase execs took the whole thing public on social media, but the SEC did not back down and Coinbase ended up scrapping the project. The SEC had successfully let the crypto world know that there was a new sheriff in town. And this seems to have set the tone for their interactions in the future. Coinbase has recently increased token offerings, which gained them even more attention from the SEC. And now they've found themselves in the middle of an SEC probe into whether it's been offering unregistered securities on its platform. Unsurprisingly, this caused Coinbase stock to plummet by 21%. Given that Coinbase is such a large exchange, listing over 150 tokens, having those tokens deemed securities would be a huge overhaul to the crypto industry. Beyond just the company itself having to register as an exchange with the SEC. And while the Coinbase chief legal officer has said, we are confident that our rigorous diligence process, a process that the SEC has already reviewed, keeps securities off our platform. And we look forward to engaging with the SEC on the matter. It's unclear as to how this situation will resolve at this point, but a crypto exchange versus the US government 
isn't exactly a good outcome for the industry. If the SEC can regulate Coinbase, everyone else will follow. Exchange platforms don't want to offer tokens that become securities because they then trigger investor protection rules, which makes business more difficult and might not be well received by their crypto consumer base. So is the no rules, no regulation party over with? Or will this just be a years long power grab without much progress? I think regulations can be okay, as long as they don't slow down progress in the space. So what do you think? Are cryptocurrencies a security?